you're looking at a map of low temperatures. Most people won't be able to read these temperatures, but what you need to know is light blue is freezing and dark blue is almost freezing. And in this case, the dark blue happened to be freezing. The lows were underreported and in, in some areas they were reporting 35 degrees, 36 degrees, and then got down to 30, 32 degrees. There's a system that moved just slightly. It's not even moving. It's very slowly moving, and you'll see why in just a second. But those blue numbers shifted over just a little bit. But in front of that storm that we're going to show you, in front of that circle is a warm front that's going due north. And with, or you know, let's put north, north, east and going up towards the Great Lakes. A system that is rapidly transporting warmer air, wetter air up to the Great Lakes and Illinois region. The the moisture stream comes across Mexico and cuts across Texas and creates a trough of uh, dead air. I shouldn't say dead air. It's fast moving, but there's no moisture, no no smoke, no anything. It's a, it's a dark, dark area, and we're going to flip that on right now. Um, the circle, the arrow on the upper left, that's the circle that I just showed you. In the lower right is the stream of moisture that's headed north northeast and that's a quite a large and swift moving stream the problem is is when we put it into motion uh, this you know all of these satellites they've they've cut and the the frames that you get to see you used to be able to see 24 hours now you see you know just a couple hours and almost you can't find and see the geoengineering and the weather anomalies quite so readily because they give you such little to work with. But you see that dark strip, that's that trough of it's very clean air and and uh, if, if you want to see some clear stars you, you want to get caught in one of those and that'll be the the clearest you'll see stars for a while is to get caught in one of those dark blue troughs but that's a fast spinning counterclockwise upper left and that's a, a stream that's just transported north we look at it at a different infrared put it into motion and you can see that that swirling storm was mainly spherical but now it's developing a flat front edge and it could be from a budding that other front that's coming up from the south but look how fast that moisture even just in a few frames that moisture goes from south to north and very very quickly and and we pointed this out a few years ago how these vortexes were taking moisture from the gulf of mexico or the gulf of california and in two days and three days that moisture was up at the Great Lakes and it's phenomenal the changes that uh, these vortices have created because there's no longer a jet stream that's just a series of vortexes and so anyways that that circle is coming down though from Canada and that's bringing really cold air but just in the outer ring of that storm which is now getting more elongated and slowing down we thought it'd be into Iowa now and in the central plains but it hasn't but it's it's on the edge of that storm and the bottom of that storm it's freezing it's freezing weather and it will kill your crops and it sets you up because in front of it comes warm very warm very wet and then all of a sudden two days later a freeze so you've got to be on guard now this is what we've been tracking this is in the Pacific Hawaii uh, Hawaii's lower left and the coast of the United States is the right there and this is almost a perfect sphere the thing that's odd about this storm is there's no moisture being pulled up from 
Hawaii and usually these big vortexes reach way heck down just like we saw there in, in the Gulf of California and grabs that moisture and throws it up to Alaska but that's not happening there's no like southern leg to that uh, spiral and it's mo mainly cold air being brought down from that spiral that spiral does does kind of cover the entire coast of California and if if the weather was sinisterly being applied then you would see a flat edge uh, onto that storm to push it north and the in the Gulf of Alaska you see that storm all of a sudden coming down really fast and hard right towards California well that's developing a very flat front edge as if it was meeting a ridge of artificial high pressure now up at the top middle Hawaii's down there on the left the top middle is the day after that first storm I showed you it's starting to it also developing a flat front edge so that it's possible they're going to try to uh, make this thing go north and keep those fires up blazing and I've seen some of the force thinning in some places it's pretty extreme and it bothered me because I knew how much shade we were needing on the ground cover for all the bugs and insects that live underneath pine needles and that whole ecosystem is almost gone now you find it in spots in the shade but you know for the most part you know a lot of birds relied on those bugs and it's it's just a shame and and thinning I think is needed but you've got to do it in a way that you don't destroy your ground shade you know people are saying well you know the in the old days there used to be meadows but in the old days you didn't have a UV index of 14 either so um, we needed that shade uh, so there's a there's a balance between over thinning and under thinning the failure to thin the forest is being blamed for the fires and you know these forests have been the same they don't change that much over the years so what's different about this forest now than it was five years ago and fires just started getting worse and worse and worse and when you have a UV index of 12 and then 13 and then 14 and you you uh, you really create a higher flashpoints the the other thing is is that the lightning is more intense now and people even have videos of lightning doing bizarre things lightning is nothing to mess around with anymore because it creates gamma radiation it used to emit gamma radiation all the time one ten thousandth of a second you would get a little tiny burst of uh, gamma radiation coming off lightning uh, just from the electrons uh, changing direction and changing speed the but now you're also splitting cosmic rays and that are in the atmosphere sometimes neutral cosmic rays uh, that releases a lot of gamma and so the gamma radiation is 10,000 times uh, stronger than it used to be when we first started measuring gamma in lightning so you take UV index 14 you take a failure to thin your forest you spray aluminum oxide in the atmosphere which is a fire accelerant and it precipitates down in the moisture sometimes leaving a residue on the leaves and on the ground when so you increase your flash point and once you do everything is hot and dry and has an accelerant on it so this cold front is a gotcha because it only lasts for one night and it comes behind a warm front by a day sometimes just one day so in one night you could have a temperature of 52 degrees and then the next night it could be 32 and that's what's happening and if they're not telling you about it um, if you you know when you grow a garden you spend all summer tending it making watering it feeding it um, and you make it through the first freeze you got another four weeks sometimes of growing season and that's when your produce is most 
mature and putting out maximum fruit and so when you freeze it right at this point in time uh, you take out these plants that are in their prime and 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 set to produce their maximum load so be prepared